The Canon A1 was never really a camera that I saw myself buying, but after I picked up a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens at a thrift store for two bucks, I knew I had to buy a camera body that I could use that lens on, and the Canon A1 was a pretty good choice between quality and price. I was never somebody who shot a lot of 35 millimeter film, but the Canon A1 did reintroduce me to the format and I slowly fell in love with it again. I filmed a video for my friend Joe's channel a couple months ago where I shot with his Leica M6 and that really made me appreciate 35 millimeter film again. So it was at that point that I decided to start shooting with this camera again. And it really isn't a perfect camera. My copy actually has a couple pretty major flaws, but it really is in the limitations of 35 millimeter that I find myself enjoying the format. I've been carrying this camera around to so many different places and that's part of the reason that I love it so much. The fact that it's just so unobtrusive, I can have it on a strap by my side and I won't even notice it's there has just meant that I've been photographing more in my daily life and I've really been enjoying that. Today I'm in the small town of Beacon, New York. I'm here with the Canon A1 and we're gonna take some photos. I'm gonna show you how this thing works. And this is a beautiful little small town, so it should be a nice day of making some pictures. Got pretty lucky with some nice cars and some nice light right here to photograph. There's an auto repair store across the road, so we'll see what happens. That was a really nice little car scene. Whenever I come to a place like this, I usually just pop in and ask the owner if it's okay, take a couple photos and then head out. Being somebody who's used to shooting a ton of six by seven negatives, I was actually really surprised and the quality that you can get out of a 35 millimeter scan. Now I'm not gonna use this to make any crazy detailed landscape photos, but I do really just enjoy the grain structure of 35 millimeter. The colors are a little more saturated, I feel like, because it's on a smaller piece of film. And overall, it just has some really nice qualities that I think blend well into my work. Okay, wow, that was not as great as I expected. Also, I want you to see what this looks like right now. That's pretty funny.
So over the past couple months that I've owned this camera, I've been taking it pretty much everywhere that I've been going. And that's actually one of my favorite things about this. And I guess about 35 millimeters specifically is that it's just so liberating. I really don't notice this thing on the strap when it's by my side. Do you mind if I, do you mind? That's not for me. Oh yeah. Like the idiot that I am, I ran out of Portra 800, so I'm gonna be shooting 400 going forward. Probably should have shot the 400 before the 800. So at this point, you may have heard the little dog sneeze noise that my camera makes. It really does sound like a little puppy, but I've heard that's pretty common with these cameras. And personally, as far as I know, it doesn't affect the shutter speed, so I'm not too bothered by it. Look at this, I found the perfect lighting. So the sun is pretty much fully set now. There's a little bit of light left up in the trees. But aside from that, I'm hoping that the sky is kind of going to turn really nice and pink and I'll bring out the tripod and maybe keep shooting. We'll see what happens. Having this camera in my daily life just means that I'm photographing things that I wouldn't normally get if I was with my RZ in my backpack or something like that. I would never have thought to make a photo of light hitting a coffee pot in a deli when I'm grabbing a bottle of water if it was the RZ67 that was in my backpack and I had to take it out. And I just really enjoy these kinds of pictures that just feel a little bit more ordinary, but still beautiful. And that's probably my favorite thing about this camera. As I mentioned, I picked up the lens on this camera for two bucks and I'm quickly realizing that it was $2 for good reason. Basically anything under F4 or even F5.6, the image gets really soft. I've really been enjoying making images where everything in the picture is in focus recently. So I've just been shooting this camera at F8, 11, 16, and it really hasn't been so much of a problem for me. One of the things that I do love about this camera that I didn't necessarily have while I was shooting Joe's Leica M6 is the fact that you can look through the lens of the camera and see exactly what your composition looks like. I don't mind a rangefinder style camera, but I do like knowing the fact that I can see exactly how things in my composition are gonna align and that there's no weird reflections happening that I won't see through a rangefinder. So the SLR style body does give me that peace of mind and I really enjoy that. For the sake of making this a review, I guess I'll mention some features that it has. It has pretty much every kind of control that you might want. I actually really like the way that this camera switches between aperture and shutter speed priority mode, or you can use this thing on full manual. I've been using the light meter that's built in and I found it to be super accurate. I think I know at certain times when it's going to overexpose and when it's going to underexpose depending on the different values of the colors and how dark they are in the scene that I'm looking at. I've heard a lot of people talk about really nice quality lenses on 35 millimeter, but personally, aside from using low apertures, which I'm not doing so much of anyway, this lens is really sharp at f8 and above. So I don't think I'll be switching this out anytime soon, or at least not until I fully commit to the 35 millimeter lifestyle. I don't really know what this was. It was a review, it was a vlog. I hope you enjoyed it either way. You can check out my Instagram in the description. It's at Willem Verb. That's it for now. Peace.